Hello, thank you for clicking on my video. Today we're going to talk about DNA replication and if you like my videos, I would be very thankful if you could like and subscribe so you don't miss any of my new ones. So in the last video we talked about DNA and what it is and today we're going to talk about what we can do with the DNA. In this video especially we're going to talk about replication. And then the replication is when we have one cell, we divide it, and now suddenly we need two complete sets of our DNA. By the replication, we take one DNA and make exactly the same as a copy again. And how this is done, I will explain now. So first of all, here in this picture is just a short sequence of the whole DNA. Um, but you can see most of the important things, what's happening in the replication here. So we start on the right side of the picture in the middle. And there we see the DNA double helix with its two strands. And this yellow circle is the topoisomerase, an enzyme which uncoils or unwinds the DNA. So that another enzyme, the helicase, has an easier time dividing the two strands. Um, the two strands are connected by the hydrogens, hydrogen bonds between the bases. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the other video about uh, DNA first, the one that I posted yesterday, um, then you will know what I talk about. So we talk now about the area here, which is in this red um, a triangle, rectangle. And the scissor indicates the helicase, which cuts the two strands open. Then these orangey dots there, those are proteins which help to stabilize this replication fork so that the primer can be attached more easily. The primer is a sequence of up to 30 nucleotides, and these are um, set together by the uh, enzyme primase and are put on in the three end of the DNA. The DNA has a three end and a five end. Um, that's depending on the caps attached to the DNA. That's not further important, but that indicates the direction in which the processes are happening. So the primer is attached by the primase and builds the start point for the replication. The replication runs in three to five direction. So that's why the primer is put on the three end. Then the next enzyme that's working is the DNA polymerase. And this uh, polymerase takes nucleotides that are floating around in the nucleus um, and attaches them on the newly synthesized strand. The bases come into the nucleus through pores in the wall around the nucleus, they are usually uh, contained in the cytosol. The polymerase can only go from 3 to 5 direction of the original strand. And as you remember from the last video, the two strands of the DNA are going in opposite direction. So one starts at the 3 end and goes to 5, and the other starts at 5 and goes to 3, so they're anti-parallel. So in one of the strands, the polymerase has a very easy job. There's one primer, it just follows along the DNA until the end and takes the bases and attaches them accordingly to the old strand to create the new strand. But the, in the other strand, the DNA runs anti-parallel to that. So then the prim primase has to set a primer whenever there's a new part of DNA opened. You can imagine it like a zipper, just that one enzyme sits there where the zipper opens to and the other one goes in the direction where the zipper is still closed. So the primase has to set a primer again and again and again and then the uh, polymerase has to go there and has to attach them in the other direction. And then like this we have many of these sequences of primer, new DNA, primer, new DNA. And as most of the things in biology, also this has a special name, these sequences are called Okazaki fragments. 
An Okazaki fragment is a primer plus the newly synthesized part of DNA on the discontinuous strand. The, dis the continuous strand is the one where the polymerase just walks along um, the DNA, which is opened by the helicase. And the discontinuous strand is the one where we have many primers because it's slowly opening, like a zipper. And then these uh, primers have to be removed somewhere. And this is done by the RNASH. I wrote the name on the left side of the poster. And this removes the one primer on the 5 to 3 direction and all the primers, which are part of the Okazaki fragments, on the discontinuous strand. But now we have a hole in the DNA, or many holes. There were the primers were before. So now the another DNA polymerase has to come and has to fill in all these gaps where the primers were before. And then um, there are connections between the bridges over the uh, bases. These have to be connected now by another enzyme called ligase. And this um, connects everything to be an even and continuous strand now. So there where the Okazaki, Okazaki fragments were is now everything filled in and we have a complete strand also on this side. And then the new DNA, because now we have two DNAs and when the topoisomerase and the helicase were finished with uncoiling and dividing the strand and the DNA polymerase and all the other enzymes finished their job, we have two strands of uh, double-stranded DNA and one of them, each of them has one new and one old strand. So that's why this replication is called semi-conservative replication. Semi meaning half, half conservative, because one of the DNA strands is a new one and one of the DNA strands is a just newly synthesized one. Thank you for watching my video. That's all for DNA replication. Tomorrow we're gonna talk about transcription. I hope it was helpful and everything was clear. Thank you again for watching. Goodbye.